OpenAI. Heard of them? They have this AI product that's kind of popular. Maybe you heard of that. ChatGPT? Well, they have an API for others to use to leverage OpenAI's products. It's not the best API to use, but it's there and it's pretty popular. If you've been using Olama for any amount of time, you know there's an Olama Discord. And if there is one question that is more frequently asked than any other, it would have to be no question, not even close. It's, why is there only one freaking channel on this server? But this isn't that video. If you look at the second most popular question of all time, again, it's so obvious. You only have to be in Discord for 30 seconds. It's about, why is my GPU not being used? Again, wrong video for that question. But the third most popular question is absolutely, unequivocally, where is OpenAI API compatibility? People don't even know what it means and they want it. Well, as of this release of Olama 0.1.24, it is right there for you to use. Nothing special for you to turn on. Now, there are some features that aren't available yet, but for most folks, it'll just work. So does that mean that folks who spent the time adding Olama to their product just wasted the equivalent of a few Blueys? No, but Bluey is pretty awesome, even if us Americans don't get to watch the Pregnant Dad episode. What else is in this release? Mm, not much. It really is all about OpenAI. Not that I don't appreciate EASP's pointer to LM Olama or MRazor's CUDA contribution, but let's talk OpenAI. So this has API in the name of the feature, but let's start the opposite point of view. The end user who is working with ChatGPT for their regular jobby job. I'm on a Mac. So I did a search for regular client tools that use OpenAI in some form or another and do not support Olama. At first I was going to use Obsidian, but it seems that most of the tools either support Olama now or don't have a way to add a custom URL. Now, why is adding a custom URL important for ChatGPT? Well, if you are a company and the very real privacy and security issues with ChatGPT scare you, then you can host the service yourself on your Azure environment. And then you probably want your users to use that service so that your company's secrets don't get discovered by a reporter, like what happened to Samsung. I found a cool tool called MindMac. This is a super slick tool, and I think I may consider buying it. But when I first tried it, I could have sworn that Olama wasn't in the supported list. So I set up Olama as if it were OpenAI. And then when I started scripting this script, I saw that Olama was in the supported list. So less useful for me for, for this video. Well, then I found ChatWizard on GitHub and got it installed. This works great with ChatGPT, but it has no idea what Olama is. If you come into settings, you can see a place to put in a URL. At first, I put in HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 11434 slash v1 as per the Olama release announcement. But this didn't work. Thankfully, I can use the Olama debug environment variable to figure out what's going on. There, you see that? It says slash v1 slash v1. Okay, so go back into settings and remove the v1 from the URL. Now, before I knew you could add a model, I just did an Olama CP New Hermes Mixtrol to GPT 3.5 Turbo, tricking the system to think it was really on OpenAI, and that works. But it turns out you can add a model in the, um, uh, you know, in IceBlock view. Just enter a model name, and then you can define a cost if you like. There's no checking that the model exists, so be careful here. Then the model just works in the chat. Check this out. Pretty nice, huh? Now let's change gears a bit and get a little bit more technical, a little closer to the developer persona. Autogen Studio. This is a pretty cool app from the folks at Microsoft that brought us Autogen. The idea of Autogen is to make it super easy to build agents that will do things for you using the power of AI. This gets more powerful when you combine the agents to work together on your tasks. Autogen 
and Autogen Studio work with the OpenAI API. Autogen is a purely developer product, while Studio is a web GUI that's a touch more friendly. It has been popular to use Olama with these, according to the posts in the Discord, but to do so, you have to use light LLM in the middle. And I think you might even have to set up a web server. Well, you used to have to do that. Now you can just use Olama directly. Once you get Autogen Studio installed and up and running, which is easier said than done because it's Python, go to build and then the models tab and then click the green new model button. Enter a model name. I'll use Dolphin Mistral and then the API key. Something has to go in here, but I don't think it really matters what. Then there's the base URL. The default to go here is HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 11434. And that's it. Try out the model. Hmm. Well, okay, well, it failed. Okay, let's add the slash v1 to the URL. Try again, and huh, there we go. From here, you can create skills, which are specific activities you want your agent to do. This could be search the internet, or search a database, or parse a file, or, well, whatever. These skills are written in Python, so there is almost no limit to what you can do. And then you create agents that have a system message, a model, and possibly some of the skills defined. Then finally, a workflow that orchestrates the different agents to do some sort of complex task. Let's just use one of the examples, the general agent workflow, and have it run through the sine wave example. Now, this takes a minute or two on my machine, but while it's working, we can verify it's running by checking out the Olama logs as well as the Autogen logs. This example is writing a Python script. It's simple, so any of the common models should handle it. But for more complex tasks, perhaps a larger, more specific model is required. Or if your workflow is querying a database using a skill and then interpreting that to English or another language, maybe a super lean and fast model is the approach to take. This is super cool, but there's probably a warning somewhere not to do this on your local machine. It's creating code and running it without your input. So it could do a lot on its own. Now, I am not worried that this is Skynet or bringing on the doom of AGI, but maybe it could wipe out your entire machine. That's probably why Docker is recommended for the Python environment. I might actually spin up a new machine on Brev to secure it. I think it would be great to be able to cover Autogen in more detail in the future. Let me know in the comments if that is interesting to you. Finally, let's look at going one level deeper. You are now a full-on developer. So we need to open VS Code. And now go to it. Oh, well, maybe we need some help. So let's look at OpenAI's developer site. I'll go to chat, and here's a code sample ready for us to try. Back to VS Code, and I want to use Dino for this one. So I'll do a quick Dino init, which creates the main.ts file and Dino.json files. And then I'll replace the existing code with the code sample from OpenAI. Dino has a different way of dealing with packages. So to use a regular NPM package, just throw NPM colon at the beginning of the import. Now we need to update the constructor. First, an API key. I'll just set this to a llama. And next is the base URL. And that's going to be localhost and the port slash v1. That should be all we need so we can run it. When you use Dino, you need to be intentional about the resources used. So Dino run allow net main.ts. And there is our message from Olama. And we can watch the logs to ensure that it really is Olama running this open AI call. To make it a little more pretty, we can just print out the message content. So we have seen the new OpenAI API compatibility in Olama, and we saw it from three different perspectives, a user, a power user, and a dev. I think this is pretty cool. Using the Olama API directly is going to be easier, more performant, and generally better, but especially with the official JS and Python libraries, as well as you know, all the community created libraries for, for Rust and, and Ruby and, and R and Swift and so many others. But if there's an existing tool that uses the OpenAI API today and lets you set the base URL, then this is going to be super powerful 
for you. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see on this channel. It seems that a lot of you have been subscribing to the channel, and I love every single one of those subs. It is so exciting to watch how many of you are interested in me creating more videos. So keep it up, and thank you so much for doing that. And thanks so much for watching this one. Goodbye.